GPUs are one of the more complicated pieces of hardware that you'll have to study up on when the time comes for you to build a PC or even just upgrade your existing one. For a comprehensive look at the basics of CPUs and how you should weigh the value of individual specs when deciding on the best one for your build, please refer to the link in the description. This is not a shameless self-plug. We say this because this video was made with the assumption that you've already got your basics down. Without at least a rudimentary grasp of the basics, the discussion about the differences between the Intel Core series and the Intel Core X series of processors becomes somewhat pointless. And this is precisely what our topic will be in today's video. What this terminology means and how it can cause issues. Common sense dictates that the X series should be more advanced than the regular series, and this is basically the gist of it. But as always, Intel has gone out of their way to make things unnecessarily complicated and convoluted, so we'll be clearing up the mess along the way as well. By the end of this video, you'll know the basic differences between these two series of CPUs, along with their value for gaming in particular. So without any further ado, let's begin. The Intel Core series of CPUs dates back to the mid-2000s, with the introduction of the original Intel Core Solo and the Intel Core Duo CPUs. In 2008, Intel introduced the ranking system that still holds to this day, giving us the i3, i5, and i7 CPUs. Intel Core i3 CPUs were, and still are, intended as budget solutions for low-end builds. The i5 CPUs were, and still are, perfectly serviceable mid-range models and the i7 CPUs were touted as the ultimate high-end models. Nowadays, i7 CPUs are no longer the highest of high-end mainstream CPUs, but they're still incredibly powerful in their own right. On the other hand, the Intel Core X series of CPUs made its debut almost a decade later in 2017 as a successor to the Intel Core i7 Extreme lineup. Like the i7 Extreme lineup, the Core X series was made with enthusiasts and professionals in mind. This was the series that gave us the first Core i9 models. For a while, all i9 CPUs were part of the Core X series, but of course, Intel had to go and make an i9 model for some of its regular core series just to make things a little bit more complicated. In any case, the core difference, pun intended, between the Intel Core and the Intel Core X series of CPUs boils down to its target audience. Intel Core CPUs are made with mainstream audiences in mind, while Intel Core X CPUs are aimed towards professionals. Needless to say, the Core X CPUs offer better performance, but they also carry a higher price tag. Nevertheless, the performance gap and the intended audience aren't all that separates these two series of CPUs. After all, there's already a high performance gap and sizable price gap between the i3 and i7 models. So let's take a look at what defines an Intel Core X CPU. We try our best to make our videos easy for everyone to follow, but CPUs are a subject matter that makes this extremely difficult. So if you don't know your Intel CPU architectures, this part won't really make any sense, so we'll keep the technical talk to a minimum. There are three architectures that the Core X CPUs have been based on so far. Skylake X, the short-lived KB Lake X, and Cascade Lake X. These include both i7 and i9 CPUs and even a single i5 model. However, we should point out that all of the Cascade Lake X models available at the time of the recording are i9s. So those of you looking to get the latest Core X CPU currently have the benefit of narrowing your search just to i9 models. As we've said, the i9 moniker is no longer exclusive to the Core X series, as it was brought over to the mainstream Core series in 2019 as part of the refreshed Coffee Lake 5 lineup. The current Comet Lake 5 lineup also features i9 models. So while all current-gen Core X CPUs bear the i9 name, not all current-gen i9 CPUs are Core X CPUs. It's like with fingers and thumbs. When comparing the Core and the Core X series side by side, we need to look at three factors. The performance, the price, and the socket. The Core X CPUs are all powerful and expensive high-end processors with more cores than their mainstream cousins. A Core X CPU can cost anywhere between $400 and $2,000. 
depending on the model. They also all use the IGA 2066 socket. The number of cores that they feature changes from year to year, but they always feature more cores than the mainstream core CPUs released around the same time. Another thing that has distinguished the Core X series of CPUs so far is that all of its members come equipped with hyper-threading. Meanwhile, mainstream core CPUs cover a price range from around $100 to about $500, and this includes i3 CPUs, i9 CPUs, and everything in between. The mainstream core CPUs also utilize a different socket. For several generations now, this has been the LGA1511 socket, but the LGA1200 socket is set to supplant it with the advent of the 10th generation of mainstream Intel core processors. So all in all, one of the best ways to distinguish the Core series from the Core X series at face value is by looking at the price, as they use a lot of overlapping terminologies. Even hyper-threading on all models won't be a Core X exclusive deal pretty soon. Now, there's no denying that the Core X CPUs are simply more powerful than their mainstream Core CPUs. They offer more processing power and feature more cores. For example, the upcoming 10th gen mainstream core CPUs are set to have the following core and thread counts. The i3s will have 4 cores and 8 threads, the i5s will have 6 cores and 12 threads, the i7s will have 8 cores and 16 threads, and the i9s will have 10 cores and 20 threads. Just to be clear, we're talking about the mainstream core CPUs that sell in the $100 to $500 price range. Please take a moment to appreciate that these are some compelling specs. Intel wouldn't be offering them if AMD hadn't stepped up their game, but still. The i3s of today easily outdo many of the mid-range models from just a few years back. Now compare this to the Cascade Lake XI9 CPUs that start with 10 cores and 20 threads and go as high as 18 cores and 36 threads. These CPUs will run you anywhere between $600 and $1000. Needless to say, the latter CPUs offer better overall performance, but this does not mean that they are better for gaming. No matter how much raw power a piece of hardware has, if it is not a graphics card, it will reach a point of diminishing returns sooner or later. This is because game developers have to optimize their games to run on mainstream hardware. After all, what's the point of spending hundreds of thousands of hours developing a game if only a select few gamers with supercomputers will be able to run it. And if a game is made to utilize, say, 8 CPU cores, then it will utilize 8 CPU cores. The other 2, or 12, or 28 cores will not contribute much, if anything, to improve the performance of that game. So no, the Core X CPUs are not better than mainstream CPUs for gaming. This isn't to say that you won't see any improvements between a $700 CPU and a $400 CPU when gaming, but the improvements will be marginal, and most certainly not worth the extra money. If you've got an extra $300 to burn on your PC, then getting a better graphics card is always a better option. In fact, the GPU should be the sole indicator of how powerful a CPU you need for gaming. Your primary concern should be that it doesn't bottleneck your GPU. This happens when the GPU is significantly more powerful than the CPU. Since the CPU is the one issuing commands to the GPU, it simply won't be able to realize the GPU's full potential. So if you're building to build the most cost-efficient gaming rig, you should only aim to get a CPU powerful enough so that it doesn't bottleneck your GPU. Leaving some extra wiggle room in there for a potential GPU upgrade is okay, but don't overdo it, since as we've said, games simply cannot squeeze more performances out of a CPU after a certain threshold has been reached. What's more, since the Core X CPUs use a different socket, they also require special motherboards that aren't compatible with regular Core CPUs. And LGA2066 motherboards are fairly pricey, so gamers should stick to mainstream CPUs as they're not only more affordable, but also more cost-effective. And that about does it for this video. In conclusion, the Core X series of CPUs packs significantly more power, but it also comes at a much higher cost. However, since the added processing power of these CPUs doesn't really do much to affect gaming performance, there really is no use in getting them if the primary goal of your PC is to run games. These CPUs are intended for professionals and enthusiasts, 
A mainstream Intel Core CPU is more than good enough for gaming. The i3 models are perfectly serviceable for budget builds, the i5 models are great for mid-range builds, and the i7 models are powerful enough to support all but the most high-end builds. In any case, we hope you found this video useful. Make sure to let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to enable notifications. We upload a new video every week, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.